we're back and we're moving into our second conversation for today. We are joined by Policy Advisor for Healthy Caribbean Coalition, Nicole Foster, who's joining us this morning from Barbados. Good morning. Good morning. All right, and of course, uh, Nicole is here to talk about the ongoing front labeling campaign. Uh, it is currently up for vote, the regulations that is, uh, and it is online, and you're trying to get the education going as to why this is important for us in the region. Yes, absolutely. So what is going on right now is that CARICOM has gone through a process of revising its existing standards for prepackaged foods, mm -hmm. and what they've done is to include as part of that revision front of pack warning labels and the the scheme that they have in the draft standard right now is one that uses black octagonal warning scheme um, symbols that basically indicate very clearly quickly and accurately to individual consumers and children whoever is looking at the package whether it's high in fat salt or sugar yeah. And today is the day, this is the day that votes are supposed to go in from our respective national bureaus into the CARICOM Regional uh, Organization for Standards and Quality. Exactly. So you see there the standard that um, we as health professionals are pushing for. How important is this campaign to raise public awareness on um, the warnings that are coming on these labels? This is, this campaign is critical. Really, um, front of pack warning labels are an important part of our response to the NCD's crisis that we have throughout our region. And what the evidence shows us is that our NCD epidemic is unfortunately being driven by unhealthy diet of the various modifiable risk factors, it is diet that is killing us, basically. And so front of pack warning labels are basically a quick, easy, and accurate way for consumers to be able to identify those products that have an excess of nutrients that are linked to the chronic non-communicable diseases that are such a bane within our region. And so it's really important for us to get everybody on board and for them to signal really strongly and overwhelmingly to our heads, to our leaders, to our standards bureaus, most importantly in the context of this campaign, that this is the system we want. As consumers, we have a right to know what is in our food. We have a right to be healthy. And we think that this is an important part of moving down that road. Now, let's, let's talk about what effects a front label warning uh, on a package should and would have. Because most products come with a nutrition fact somewhere listed on the product. But this is different. Yes, this is very different. And this is why it, it, it really, so it's useful that you ask about the evidence because this entire campaign is premised on evidence and conflict of interest-free evidence. And across the globe, we've had numerous studies done in Chile, Uruguay, and Mexico, sort of really pointing out that of all the labeling schemes that we have out there, that this one with the octagonal warning labels functions the best in terms of enabling a consumer, a busy mother who just wants to get some food for her kids and get back home to cook, um, to accurately, quickly, and effectively um, identify which ones might be problematic. Yeah. And Jamaica would have recently done, so PAHO, uh, Jamaica's Ministry of Health and Wellness and the University of Technology in Jamaica, interestingly, in addition to the global studies, we now have from about two months ago, a CARICOM-based study, yes. which basically endorsed all the findings that were found within the other um, countries globally, that this team is the one that works best. Because we know when you're looking at that back of label, that nutritional label at the back, 
you need a degree in dietics to yes. be able to figure out if it's good or not. And mm -hmm. even in terms of some of the other front of part options, so not doing it on the back, but doing it on the front, as I said, the evidence is saying to us that really the only one that performs well on all the aspects in terms of allowing us to make an informed choice is this octagonal front of part warning label scheme. And it's not just the, well, I mean, I guess it's all, all in connection. It's putting the labels in the front. It's the coloring and, and location you choose. Exactly. But it's, it is, but it's also sure. the language. It's very simple. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So my seven-year-old son, a three-year-old child, will be able to immediately look at a package and see front of, you know, if I see four big warning labels on a package, that immediately says to me, okay, this is something I need to think about a little bit more carefully. Uh, and, and so really from the part, this type of front apart warning labeling is actually powerful in terms of from an equity point of view because many of the other schemes require a certain level of sophistication in terms of education and being able to read and interpret no interpretation is needed with this. You see it, as I said, a three-year-old will be able to figure out that that's not looking like something that mommy should be buying for me. Yeah. So the, you're talking about a vote that is taking place uh, within CARICOM. Does this mean then that this, whatever the outcome of the decision would be, that we will adopt it across the region in terms of items that are exported or items that are also manufactured for consumption locally? Okay, so two, 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 two aspects to that question. So firstly, um, yes, this is being done as a CARICOM standard. So the, this is a CARICOM process, and that makes sense. Our problem is a regional problem. It's not unique to Barbados, to Jamaica, to Trinidad. Across the board, the Caribbean, unfortunately, has some of the highest rates of obesity in the world, as well, in particular, childhood obesity. Childhood. Mm -hmm. And then also to... Um, we know that we, you know, we, we, we try to address things at a regional level since we create this, this single space. So this is being done at a CARICOM level, but then the implementation would still be done individually. So we're just trying to get agreement at the regional level that if you want to introduce a front apart labeling scheme, this is what is being recommended at the regional level. And then um, individually states would implement. And then the second part of your question is absolutely these standards would apply across the board to both domestic and imported products because the it's a health measure it's not about trade it's about health and whether or not the product is produced locally or domestic or imported it's having the same impact in terms of driving that obesity epidemic including within our um, child child population across this region so it's important to have a measure that is non-discriminatory and balanced in its approach that really gets to the heart of the matter as a health issue a health problem that we're trying to con to counteract now how does this work for imported products though so while uh products that are manufactured within the caribbean may have the label uh, for countries, especially like Belize, where we get or imports, it's, it's not necessarily, they're not all from the Caribbean. Right. So the idea would be that, so as with any, so say, for example, you know, currently you get products in from, um, from the USA, etc., that already have um, labels on them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so the idea would be, and equally you would know that in Belize, I imagine it's the same thing like in Barbados, that we have certain national standards for it. So for example, in Barbados, we require that when persons bring in food, that it must have the ingredients not in English. Even if it's in yes. another foreign language, it must be in English. Now that is something that um, all uh, persons wishing to export to Barbados have to comply with. And so it would be the same thing, either at the level of the exporter themselves, if they're so minded in terms of already manufacturing in a way where their package incorporates this label, or at the border, 
stick a sticker on it. We do it all the time for other products. So you, you, you know, yeah. the responsibility would then be at the local level to ensure that there's the enforcement and the follow through in terms of monitoring of what is coming in to ensure that there's compliance with the standard, assuming that it is adopted at the national level. And I understand from um, Heather Renault from the Belize Cancer Society that in fact, you all are already getting some of products with, with the octagonal labels because for example, they're coming from across your, your close um, uh, borders with uh, uh, Mexico and Chile. Yeah, and they have they have already implemented uh, they the have front already label. Implemented yes, and we have seen amazing, really yeah. overwhelming and positive yeah. results coming out of the adoption of yeah. front of part labeling in those um, territories. Nicole, Healthy Caribbean Coalition has really um, been an active part of trying to get uh, awareness built about. Uh, the health concerns that we are facing. Your partner in Belize is Belize Cancer Society, and that is because when you look at obesity and you look at non-communicable diseases, um, they can be linked to cancer and, of course, to other uh, illnesses that make people end up in hospitals or lose their life. Uh, in the Caribbean, there have been many different efforts that have been ongoing. Some include uh, taxing sugar-sweetened beverages, some include um, putting restrictions in place in school systems where children don't have access to uh, junk food. Some people even restrict the, the level of uh, marketing that can be done to children near schools. Talk to us about the efforts that have been implemented and, and why you think this, this takes so much time to really get the buy-in. Yeah, so we... we it's important to, to emphasize and to appreciate that front of part warning labels are, as you said, not a single policy tool. It's part of a suite of measures that CARICOM has endorsed as a, a, a multi-tool response to the um, obesity epidemic and related um, NCDs and epidemic. And um, so, as you quite rightly pointed out, we've had across um, the territories different levels of uptake as it relates to taxation of sugar sweetened beverages, imposition of um, restriction on marketing, et cetera. But what um, we're really emphasizing is that FOPL can be an important impetus in this process, because as you said, it does take a while. And, and so we, 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 we think that FOP from the part warning labels can play an important role in in providing support to much of these things. For example, if we wanted to think about restricting the sale of products in schools or marketing in the schools, obviously, in the context of a front apart warning labeling scheme, we wouldn't have to be worrying about, but how do we determine which ones we, we, we choose and which ones we don't choose? Mm -hmm. How do we avoid being um, you know, accused of bias? Well, if we have a system that's based on evidence, that's non-discriminatory, that says to us what these products are high in uh, salt, sugar, and fat, then it is a very easy, it's a much easier process than to move towards implementation of the types of additional policies that we want to have. Yeah. But in addition, the, you know, oftentimes we get this pushback about, oh, you just need to educate your public and, you know, people need to take responsibility for their health. And, and the fact of the matter is that it is almost impossible to make healthy choices because from birth right through to death, we are surrounded by an obesogenic environment one that is um, where we are subjected to the power of marketing, issues of cost and culture, all of those things come into play. And so we see front of part warning labeling as being an important tool for allowing us to reset, to start to build back better, as we say, for example, in the context of COVID-19, which we have seen the connections between our NCDs levels and, and, and mortality and serious illness in the context of COVID-19. So something like front of part labeling can really give a strong push to many of these initiatives that we have been trying before, but really need to be brought together and have a common way of looking at which products are we going to be paying particular attention to as opposed to others. Is it also perhaps a, a 
an option for uh, manufacturers themselves. If they're tasked with putting four or five labels on the front of their package, they may reconsider um, the ingredients that they use or the, the makeup of the product itself. Absolutely, and we have seen that in the context. The evidence shows us, so um, globally, we have seen that in the context of Chile and Mexico, et cetera, as, as industry has responded to the implementation of this policy, but also to right here in the Caribbean, we have seen in the context of Jamaica, for example, who introduced uh, restrictions on sugar sweetened beverages in their schools, they have seen some formulation by industry in terms of trying to rethink some of how they produce. Um, and, and, and so, you know, it does not have to be necessarily that you just take these products off the market, never to be seen again. Hopefully there are ways in which it, it stimulates um, industry to think more critically about the products they're putting on the market, but also too, it creates niche markets. So here in Barbados, for example, we have a lot of people who are pushing natural, natural products or, you know, uh, products that are minimally processed or no added sugar and those types of things. And so it really does um, sort of challenge us to think more creatively about what we do and how we cook and what we cook with. Yeah. Now, uh, we're working in reverse, but let's, let's put this issue into perspective. We are facing, I think you call it an obesity crisis, but where it gets most concerning is our children. And there is data to explain how uh, the Caribbean is doing when it comes to childhood obesity. Tell us a bit about that. So um, childhood obesity, we have some of the highest rates in the world. Um, our, our, our rates are two to three times that of the global average, and this information I'm taking from the statement from CARFA, our Caribbean Public Health Agency, the CARICOM Health Arm, mm -hmm. in their recent statement for World Obesity Day. So we have um, some really alarming levels, uh, uh, is as high as 30-something percent of our children under, um, under the age of nine, I believe it is, um, in the Bahamas, for example, that are obese or overweight. And, and this is seriously concerning because we're setting ourselves up for a generation of unwell citizens, yeah. citizens who will become, therefore, a serious economic um, yeah. drain on our resources because you know, not because they don't want to do better, but they are unwell and therefore not able to contribute in the way that we would normally expect them to. And with obesity rates that high for children, it makes them predisposed or countries predisposed to a higher population of uh, young adults with NCDs in the very near future. Um, Absolutely, and we're seeing the evidence. And in fact, the World Obesity Federation in 2019 did, and um, their uh, childhood obesity atlas. So there are some targets that the World Health Organization has agreed um, in terms of trying to move member states towards. And so we uh, wanted to to either cut or halt the um, to to cut. Uh, our obesity rates by, I believe it's like 25% by the year 2030, something like that, or 2030, uh, or at the very least keep them stable. Yeah. And the World Federation, the World Obesity Federation um, in their 2019 um, obesity atlas very concerningly basically estimated that pretty much none of us were on track to meet that, stand, that, that, that target. That at the rate we were going, I mean, basically the best we were, we were seeing is like, we had a 3% chance or a 4% chance, depending on the member state in question. So really, really concerning statistics as it relates to childhood obesity. And, yeah. and also, I mean, be, besides the economics of it, we love our children. Yeah. We want our children to live their best lives. Can you imagine, you know, sort of the emotional and psychological issues that come along with, you know, being a child and having diabetes, type 2 diabetes, being a child and, you know, having uh, a, heart, a heart problem, uh, being a child and being unable to participate effectively in, in, in school activities, etc., because you're overweight or obese. So, you know, really it, it is a... a 
a very concerning um, development. And, and this is why, you know, Healthy Caribbean Coalition and many others are saying the time is now, no more than ever. Um, we, we need action now, we need action urgently. And in this regard, I just wanted to point out that in terms of the front to part warning scheme that, that is currently in the standard, the octagonal label, we actually have overwhelming support across the region. So we have, of course, starting off with CARFA and PACO, the premier regional health agencies whose mandate it is to guide us in this area. But we've also had the OECS commission come on board and endorse the standard. UNICEF endorsed the standard. And most recently, I mean, currently we have about 350 Caribbean health professionals and over 40 regional organizations, including yeah. the Caribbean Association of Dietitians and Nutritionists, various um, K, uh, various University of the West Indies faculties, including my faculty, the Cave Hill Faculty of Law, because I'm Deputy Dean in the Cave Hill Faculty of Law, um, the Caribbean Policy Development Center, all of these have come on board and, and publicly voiced their support yeah. for front of part warning labeling, yes, generally, but specifically that we should have the octagonal high-end warning scheme. Mm -hmm. And this is because they understand the science, they understand the evidence, they understand the urgency of acting now, yeah. and they, like all of us, want us to live our best lives, but in particular, our children to Absolutely. live their best lives. And for others who are watching right now who are in total support of your cause, maybe not a part of these associations that you have noted, how do they get involved? Okay, so Healthy Caribbean Coalition, if you go on to their website, Healthy Caribbean Dot org. There is a big banner right as soon as you go on, on, the, um, on the website allowing you to click to show your support for the front of part warning labeling um, campaign. Uh, in Belize, there's still some time to get those votes in, to get that support in. You really need, you know, we're really calling on the Belize public, on the parents, the, the, the older people, the younger people, everybody, this needs to be a whole of society. We really need as consumers to get out there and say to our heads, enough is enough. We deserve better. We want action now. We need front of part warning labels as set out in the CARICOM standards. So we encourage you to go to the site, click your support, get that information into your National Bureau of Standards so that they can represent um, a Belize appropriately in the context of the voting process then at the CARICOM level. All right. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for shedding light and putting this into perspective now more than ever. Now more than ever, we need action and we need front of part warning labels. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you and stay safe. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take our final break. And when we come back, we'll have our wrap-up. So stay tuned.